Welcome back to Life With Us TV. It's your girl, Lynette. And it's your boy, Stanley. All right, on today's video, we're going to give you the top 18 tips that the first time Carnival Cruiser should know. Listen, if you're looking at this video, I already know. You're in the research phase. You're trying to get everything down pat, yep. trying to learn as much as you can before you go on your voyage or before you even book your voyage. But you know what? Don't even worry about it. We got you. You ready to get into the first tip? Let's go. The first must know tip that the first time Carnival Cruiser needs to know is that you got to know the total cost of your cruise. Hello. You got to realize that when you get on your first Carnival Cruise, everything is not included in the mm -hmm. price that you see on their website. But majority of stuff is included. So right. don't worry about it. You're going to be just fine. You're going to oh, eat yes. and you're going to be entertained. Yes. So <laughs> we just want to let you know that some of the stuff is not included, which will be your Wi-Fi package, specialty dinings, your excursions. If you want to go to the spa and get a nice mm -hmm. massage, stuff like that is not included. All that stuff yep. is extra. It so is. keep that in mind. Drink. So packages yeah. yep the yeah. kind of drink package the bubbly package with the sodas all that stuff like there is not included so keep that in mind when you get ready to book your cruise to be sure that when you get on the cruise you ain't spending more money than you anticipated because you didn't know the total cost must know tip number two get familiar with the cabin category types i know when we first went on our first cruise and i called in to carnival <laughs> and they were like do you want an interior ocean view or a balcony and the first thing i said was interior Aren't all the cabins on the inside? <laughs> like, what's going on here? <laughs> Let's go ahead and break it down. So an interior cabin is a cabin that does not have windows. So what happens is you have like a hallway and on the outer quadrants of the hallway, you have your balconies and your ocean views and your suites. On the inside, that's what you call your interior cabins and they do not have windows. So if you're a person that does not like to feel like maybe you're a little closed in yeah. or you feel like you need to have some viewpoint and some vantage points, that's not the cabin for you. Ocean view, ocean view, <laughs> is a picture window yes the window does not open it just gives you a vantage point of where you are so that you can kind of have a little bit of so you can see so you can see so you can see <laughs> the one thing about ocean view on most of carnival ships those cabins are on decks one and two if you're gonna be freaked out by the water they may not be the cabins for you right. because they're closer to the water line balconies they speak for themselves yeah you have a balcony where most of the time they have at least two chairs you can go out there sit down enjoy the breeze go in and go out it is what it is so be familiar with the cabin types tip number three for the first time kind of a cruiser that we feel like you must know because we mm -hmm. get this a lot in our travel agency when people book yes. they do not have their vifp number mm -hmm. this is very important because it is very important <laughs> Fun people. Yeah. <laughs> so you ought to make sure you sign up for that. You can sign up for that on Carnival's website. Down in the description, I'm going to put a link for you to do that. Mm -hmm. The reason that you want to do that, because sometimes, the mm -hmm. key word is sometimes you can get first time cruiser deals. So if you don't sign up, you won't know if you're going to get a deal. Just so you know, since you're a first time with that, if you don't sign up, when you get on the ship, they will sign mm -hmm. you a VIP so everybody gets one. Must know tip number four, baby. <laughs> <laughs> know what you can and cannot bring yeah, on man. board. When I tell you, if you were to see the garbage bags and the trash cans that are loaded up yeah. <laughs> after embarkation day, you would be ashamed. Yeah, man. But it's because people are bringing things that they should not be bringing and they get confiscated. What are some of those things? Bottled water. Back in the day, you used to could be able to bring water on board. Now you cannot unless it's in cartons or in cans. Yeah. Bottled water is not acceptable. You can bring a imp bottle for your water later on a thermos double wall whatever you want to bring right. a tumbler you can bring that but not your water bottles also your cbd your thc or whatever this yeah you into you can't bring that and bring it to add to that baby even if you have a medical marijuana card it's still no <laughs> it's still a no go you just gonna have to get drunk that week yeah. <laughs> Cannot bring hard liquor. Cannot bring your iron. I know we like to be yeah. crispy, but this is one time that you're going to have to work that down in wrinkle release, or you're going to have to send that stuff down and have it ironed on the ship for a fee. Yes. But they do have ironing stations, so don't even worry about it. You'll be able to iron your clothes. 
I know. I can feel it. I can feel it. All right, tip number five that the first time Carnival Cruiser needs to know is that you gotta make sure that you have all of your proper documents. Hello. And especially if you got something coming up in the next three, six to 12 months, because you gotta make sure that you have these things. So the first thing you mm -hmm. wanna do, if you plan on getting on with your birth certificate and your driver's license, make sure that you have both of them. Most of us do have our driver's license, but sometimes you might not be able to find that birth certificate because we barely use it. <laughs> or it's still at your mama house under the mattress. Exactly. Because she still don't trust you with it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So you definitely need your driver's license, your birth certificate. Also, you can also use a birth a um, uh, passport mm -hmm. uh, as well. So you can use your passport, which you don't require you to use your driver's license, your birth certificate, you have that. That's why we always recommend that you have your passport because we feel like it's a lot more easier. So make sure that you have all those proper documents. And then the last thing is your boarding pass because you don't want to get all the way to your terminal on, on uh, embarkation day and you don't have your ticket to get on the ship, man. Definitely so, an added thing that you don't want to have to worry about. Yeah. But when it comes to passports, you can also use a passport book yes. or a passport card for a sailing. Don't don't try to go out the country on a flight with that. Just just listen at it good. So so look, cause we get it a lot in our agency that people will book and they don't have their birth certificate and they have to go to vital statistics uh, or DMV to make that happen. But you got to reschedule because it takes time for that stuff to come back. It does. So please get on that right now with that birth certificate if you plan on using that. And I'll give you one better. If you're doing a last minute sailing within the next three to four months, don't book it unless you have it in hand because it's going to cost you more money to have to move that sailing or cancel that sailing than it would for you just to wait and get that thing in hand and then book. Must know tip number six, boarding and check-in time. Yeah, man. So two weeks before your sailing, you will start to get emails from Carnival and your travel agent if you are using one. And they will remind you that, hey, on this date, your check-in process begins. What does that mean? That means that this is the time where you are able to select what time you want to arrive to get on the ship. Doing this process, you will also be able to present what type of documentation that you will be bringing to board the ship so you'll be able to enter all of that information it'll collect your flight information if that's applicable to you but the most important thing and this is one of those things that i get questioned about almost daily when can i set up my onboard spending account it is in this process that you are able to set up your onboard spending account what is an onboard spending account it's because cruising is a cashless system yes they do not accept your cash everything has to be put on a card and then that card is used for everything bending your room key your entry and your debarkation all for the ship basically your cash is useless unless it's in the casino so what we recommend we're gonna get into it probably a little bit later as well fund that card with cash Yes. Which you can only do on board or a credit card. Do not do it with your debit card because your debit card will get a lot of holds. So unless you got a whole lot of money, come and count it for me. <laughs> don't put that on it because you could be at risk of a whole lot of your money being tied up even after you disembark the ship. Tip number seven for the first time Carnival Cruiser that we think you should know, and because we use this method all the time, mm -hmm. is pre-purchase everything. And what we mean by that, don't just book your crew. Mm -hmm. But if you want to do an excursion, pay for that in advance. If you want to do specialty dining, which means that you want to go to the steakhouse, you want to do the chef's table, um, banzai, tapiyaki, all the ones that you uh, that are specialty dining on the Carnival ship, right. you want to pay for that. Um, your Wi-Fi package, mm -hmm. pay for that up front. Your gratuities, you want to pay for that up front. If you want to go to the spa, pay for that up front. Mm -hmm. So that way, when you get on the ship, you ain't got to worry about if you're going to incur any additional costs. Right. So it kind of turns it into an all in so you used to go into an all-inclusive resort and you ain't got to pull out additional money. That's what you can turn your cruise into exactly. if you prepay everything in advance. Must know tip number eight. It goes along with the check-in process. If you selected a time to come to that port, then adhere to that time. Don't come a whole lot more time early. Don't come a heck of a lot late. If right. your check-in time is, say it's at 11 o'clock, don't show up at nine. Let's go ahead and show up around about 10.30 or 10.45 and go ahead and get on the ship smoothly so nobody has to pull you out of line and be like, oh, you're here too early or, oh, you're here late, so let's go ahead and fall behind this late slot right here. 
Tip number nine that you must know as a first time Condor cruiser, that when you get on the ship, they have a thing that's called a muster drill. Mm -hmm. A muster drill is their safety briefing where they teach you how to get off the ship safely in the case of an emergency. Exactly. Make sure that when you get on, and we practice this ourselves, is that when you get on, go straight to your muster station. It is on your boarding pass, so you're gonna see it right there. So it's gonna be like- Like C4. C4 or D5 or something like that. So you wanna get that taken care of because what you're gonna end up hearing over the intercom, and we hear it on every carnival sailing. If you have not attended your muster station thing, please do it now because we ain't gonna be able to leave. And then so, they'll call your name. Yeah, they uh, yeah, yeah. I have heard them call your name. So make sure <laughs> make sure you do it. It's easy. I mean, it's so easy. It's, it, it, it ain't a lot of people there like it used to be. So get it taken care of as soon as you get on board and you ain't got to worry about it. If you're enjoying this video, go ahead mm -hmm. and smash that like button so the algorithm can send this video out to more first time cruisers like you. Must know tip number 10. And this gets confusing because we're always thinking about airline versus Cruise. Yeah. <laughs> Your carry on bag. All right, listen to me. Breathe, breathe. Because everything that I'm going to tell you goes against what you've learned for years fooling around with TSA. Yeah. This is different. So your carry-on bag for a carnival cruise or any cruise for that matter is you have to bring on your wine if you're bringing that on board. You're allowed one bottle of 750 milliliter. Yep. Nothing bigger. Nope. Um, or champagne. You have to bring that in your carry-on. All right, you with me? I know TSA got us in a chokehold, but you with me. You can bring that in your carry-on <laughs> on a carnival cruise. You also have to bring your sodas. So you are allowed to bring 12 cans of a beverage. It doesn't have to be sodas. It cannot be alcoholic beverages, Right. but you can bring canned juice. You can bring carton juice, but you cannot put that in your checked luggage. You have right. to walk that on. Also your medical equipment. <laughs> CPAP machines, yep. anything like that, you need to walk that on because that is a medical device. And I'll give you one better. Shout out to Steven at Carnival. Yeah, man. Who watches our videos and who gave me this tip when I got him on the phone the other day. He said, also put a luggage tag on your medical equipment because yes. in the case mm -hmm. that you separate from your CPAP machine, no one knows it belongs Long to, to you. you. That's a good one. Yeah, that's a good so one. So that anyone in customer service or anybody that picks it up, that takes it to customer service, is they'll be able to quickly identify that it belongs in room 1134 and be able to just drop it off and put it in your room for you. Also make sure, do not, by mistake, put your driver's license, your boarding documents, your medication, your boarding pass. Don't put any of that in your check luggage as well. You need to put that in your carry, carry on, on because you need all of that to be able to board the ship. If that stuff is sent under the ship by the porter, almost impossible to retrieve it back right. in enough time for you to sort that thing out and actually get on the ship. You don't want your stuff on the ship and you're off the ship. Right. <laughs> so I know you're looking at us saying, uh, that's a lot of stuff to be carrying in your hands. That's why you invest in something like this. Yeah, just a carry on backpack, man. Carry on backpack, it's also yeah. a work backpack. Mm -hmm. But does the job, I stick yeah. my wine right in this little pocket right here. Yep. Documents in the front. Laptop here, cause that's going. Don't don't put your laptop in your yeah. check luggage if yeah. you're bringing that on board. Yeah, put that in. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Your phone, all of that. Purse wear. Let's go ahead and do the carry-on bag. Check out our Cruise Essential store. That's gonna be linked below in the description if y'all want to take advantage of these bags right here. And then also, Steven, when he said that, I said, babe, I think we should put luggage tags on our actual carry-on bags too. That's, that's a great idea. Because at embarkation day, sometimes you set your things down on the table or beside you. Getting food. Yeah, getting food. Drinks. So it, it could get lost. So that way, if, if it does get lost, they know where to bring it back to. Exactly. Yeah, so shout out to Steven, man. Appreciate you, brother. Appreciate it. While we're talking about looking in the description field, let me show you really quick an easy way to access the description field that has all of our links to everything that we spoke about in this video. Go ahead and under the title of this video, if you are using your phone and you see a bolded word more, click on that, scroll down. And if you see the word more again in bold, click that again, scroll down. It will show you all of the links to everything that we have said in this video. And that yep. way you'll be able to access it easily and quickly. All right, tip number 11 for the first time Carnival Cruiser that we think you must know and you got to know this one. Huh. That when you get on that ship, put your phone in airplane mode immediately. 
it's been countless stories of people saying that they got off the ship and checked their phone bill when they got home. It was 500, 1,000, 2,000 because their phone was constantly trying to get a signal while they was out there at sea. So be sure to put that bad boy in the airport. Matter of fact, if you don't think you can remember when you get on the ship, as soon as you arrive to port on port day, on embarkation day out there, do it then. If you, you know, if you can't, you know, I know sometimes we still like to be talking to people and texting and all this stuff before uh -huh. we get on the ship. Sending your last selfie but, to your friends yeah, but if you that should have been there with you. Right. So you don't feel like, we ain't, we ain't trying, you have no 500 to $2,000 bill. That's just as much as the cruise. Real facts. <laughs> <laughs> that your Roman charge with the price of your crew. But the beauty of it is when you go into your Carnival Hub app, which should actually probably be the first step to anything that you do is right. download the Carnival Hub app. Once you get into that app, which is your lifeline on board, it is your daily planner. It is your chat feature. If you um, choose to participate in that, it's $5 for the duration of your cruise. Right. You can chat to other people on the cruise as long as they've also did it in that app. Before you can even get that to work properly, you have to put your phone in airplane mode. That is the way around that. It's usually that that teaches you how to do it and prompts you to do it. All right, tip number 12. Take a moment and actually walk the ship. Yes. Towards some of those like common areas because there's nothing worse than having to be somewhere at a certain time and you have no idea how to get there. Yeah, try to like find really it. just try <laughs> to find your bearings. If anything, start with where is my dining venue at right. for my dining at night? Figure out where that is. If you want to be a person that goes to the club, find that. Keep that out. If you're a person that has heard about a particular bar and you want to visit that, keep it, it out. Yep. Just make sure that you know like, okay, from my cabin, I get on the midship elevator, go down, and it's around the corner. Make sure you look, you find where's the casino. Right. It will save you a whole lot more headaches, and well, it will keep you from getting headaches. Yeah. Because you'll be able to know where things are easily. Tip number thirteen for the first time crown of a cruiser. Now, this tip we gave this back a uh, year mm. ago, and I that. At one time, you could eat as much as food as you want in a dining room, and it was at no extra charge. Mm -hmm. But they got tired of us Wasting wasting all food. that food, and I gotta admit that we do waste we did. a lot of food. Because yeah. it was now your I'm, opportunity I'm yeah. to try this, try, try that, that, try yep. this. And you just pick one thing off and be like, oop, I don't yep. like that, oop, don't like that. It's wasteful. So now, I mean, it's not a ridiculous charge. Your first two entrees will be free, which I think that's plenty. That's fair. Yeah, and then the third one, if you really wanna go in, it's an extra five bucks which that's not to me is not a make or break but i feel right. like after you get through that first plate and second and second one you most likely probably not gonna exactly win. yeah and that's that i believe that's why they did that because mm -hmm. that's probably where the most waste was ever if you go to the buffet that's a still I mean, that's that's still unlimited guys burgers yeah those all those kind like of yeah. just in the dining room it's not unlimited you can't order as much of stuff as you want must know tip number 14 spoke about it earlier it's your your lifeline on the ship it's your sign and sale card it was yep. a sale and sign card this right here takes the place of your money it's your room key it's your assets on the ship it's your assets off the ship you will get this card on the day that you embark the ship and it's usually left on your door to the cabin so like we said, you cannot use cash on the ship. So what happens is if you want to use cash essentially to fund this, you have to do that on embarkation day. So as soon as you get on the ship, go to guest services or go to one of the kiosks and search your money. It will attach to the card. If you don't use all of it, yep. go the night prior to getting off the ship, get your money back. Go ahead in the check-in process like we already spoke about. Attach your credit card to this. At the end of the cruise, it settles itself up. You don't have to visit guest services nope. unless you see something on your charges that doesn't look quite right to you you do have access to view your charges at any time via your carnival hub app or on the tv on your in your cabin right here this is it yep. <laughs> If there's anything that you have to have a learning curve on is that your money is no good on a ship unless it's in a casino. Everything. Your child wants to go to the candy shop. You're going to have to link them to you so that they can spend your money, but you can put limits on your children. Um, a lot of people ask me that you can put, so say for instance, I only want my child to spend $10 a day. You can mm -hmm. put that on there so that you don't get home and have a $500 candy yeah, bill. Yeah, yeah. Cause we watch soul playing. <laughs> He said, Dad, I put everything on this credit card stuff for an Escalade. Yes. I try to mount this side. Yeah. That's what kids do. Your profile pic 
is actually attached to this. So once yeah. you get on the ship, sometimes they will ask you, hey, pose for a picture. If they don't use the picture from your passport, if that's something you're boarding with, they'll ask you to, to take a picture. Every time they scan this, they're going to see your face. Why? Because if somebody found your card and went to buy drinks, and you over here a whole African American. Yeah. And they Caucasian. They're like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. This not you, yeah, baby. This ain't you. <laughs> so it goes for your identification on there as well. Tip number 15, and we get this question from first time cruisers all the time. Do I have to book an excursion with Carnival? Can I use a third party because I see that it's, cheaper. it's a lot cheaper. And you are 100% correct. It is mm -hmm. cheaper. But as a first time cruiser, we do not recommend it because mm -hmm. At this point, you you're this is your first time. You don't know what you're doing. You don't know what to expect. You might not have ever been in that right. country. Right. Think about when you buy a carnival excursion, you are guaranteed to not be left. They're not going to leave you. Mm -hmm. If you do a third party excursion, and when I say leave you, means that you went to the excursion and you didn't get back on time to leave. Uh, so they say they leaving at five and you ain't back by five, bye bye. If you on a third party's excursion, if right. you on their excursion, they, they gonna have, have to, to wait. They gonna have to keep that ship and pop until you get there. We had the instance um, yes, last year. We did. Yeah. <laughs> we were like an hour late. Yeah, it was an hour late. It kept <laughs> raining and it was like, you know what? Y'all gonna get this full experience. Y'all paid y'all money. We like we appreciate it, but we was an hour getting back. So yeah, so Vi Viator is usually the ones that people use to ask us about. They are really good, mm -hmm. but I would we recommend not using Viator on your first cruise, maybe on your right. second or third one. And now you got your footing right because if Viator don't bring you back on time, the gonna... ship will still leave you. And I yeah. know that they yeah. have guarantees on most of their things, like guaranteed to get you back on time. But in the instance they don't, you that left. ship still gonna yeah, leave. Yeah, that's their guarantee, that's not their Carnival. guarantee. That's so if they fail on their guarantee, you're still left behind right because you end up because we don't want you to end up paying you get left on a third party excursion and have to end up paying thousands of dollars to get back home must know tip number 16 as my husband just spoke about the excursions and whatnot and being back or having the guarantee of being back on time tip number 16 goes right along with that make sure that you are back at that cruise port and ready to get back on that ship at least an hour before they tell you that that ship is going to take off Yes, please. I don't care. Please. Get back. And also, let me give you one better. If you go into certain countries, there is a time change. Yes. So if you're on the ship, make sure that you listen carefully to what they are going to tell you. They'll tell you we're on ship time. So make sure that you set your clock or your watch or your phone or a mental note that maybe my phone is an hour behind the ship time, depending on what port I'm in. Because mess around and get that messed up, you're going to be left behind. Right. This comes into play a lot when a lot of people don't take excursions or those third party excursions. Right. And maybe you're just walking around. Maybe you walk to the local beach. Get back on time. Time, right. <laughs> Yeah, at least the hour is the minimum. I, yeah. I treat a cruise ship like I will an airplane. Yeah. They don't give a buck about your feelings. <laughs> when that door is closed, it's yep. closed. They'll see you running on a pier and say, er, er. And then you have a whole <laughs> lot of people they, hollering at exactly you. like this, waving Ooh. at you. <laughs> <laughs> and making videos for yeah. YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> All right, tip number 17 for the first time Carnival Cruiser that you must know at Debarkation Day. Uh, what well, a day before Debarkation. Mm -hmm. day that you have two options for your luggage you can either take your luggage off the ship with you mm -hmm. the next day and at debarkation or the night before you can leave it out there so that the staff can come and take it down for you keep in mind there are rules that you have to follow if you want to put your bags on the outside so carnival the, the, the night before they're going to provide you a sheet they're going to slide it underneath your door mm -hmm. um, <laughs> <laughs> and just follow just follow those rules the number one rule that we say that you don't want to forget if you leave your stuff out there is please bring out some clothes mm -hmm. for you to get off the next day because we don't want you to come downstairs in your pajamas. And then number two, speaking of pajamas, make sure you have, have your pajamas. pajamas for that night. Because if you wake up and you don't, if you like me to sleep in your birthday suit, oh God. the next day if I put my bags out there, I don't know what I'm gonna do. You had to walk out with a robe on. <laughs> yeah, I had to walk out with a robe And on. also make sure that you leave your medication so that you can put that in your carry-on. Final must know tip yeah, for man. the first time Carnival Cruiser. We're at eight Hope you enjoyed this thus far. But listen, 
I know that you're eager to get back home, yep. get your travel started, especially if you're flying out the day of getting off the ship. Keep in mind that you should not be booking flights um, until after 12 noon on that day. The reason for that being you might be back in port at eight or nine o'clock in the morning. That does not mean that customs is going to clear that ship so that you'll mm. be able to get off. Right. That does not mean that the lines to be able to get off the ship aren't going to be super long. It does not mean that there will not be mishaps at the port that prevents you from getting to an earlier flight. 12 o'clock and beyond is the golden rule. Noon or further out. I know it's not always convenient. You see that 11 o'clock and it's tempting. Not saying that you can't make it. But do you want to put yourself under that kind of stress? Right. No. Mm, you don't. <laughs> We've been there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> if you have enjoyed this video, you want to check out this video right here. 13 mistakes to avoid on your first cruise. And we're going to catch you in the next video. Peace. Peace.